HRN listeners. As we celebrate our 15th year, we are deepening our commitment to giving voice to the next generation of food system storytellers, and we need your help. Our internship and fellowship programs help activate new possibilities for underrepresented and underestimated young people through experiential journalism, audio engineering, and production training. Through these unique programs, HRN helps food equity stewards build essential workforce readiness skills that expand their potential and foster economic mobility. Please consider supporting these critical programs. And with a minimum donation, you can be entered to win a dinner for two at an amazing restaurant in one of eight cities and tickets to a concert at a great venue in one of those cities. We have incredible partners across the country who have donated as they also share our passion for helping to educate the next generation of food system storytellers. Check out heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. That's heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. And make sure you donate before March 31st. Thank you. This piece was brought to you by Roberta's, robertaspizza.com. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network. We're a member-supported food radio network broadcasting over 35 weekly shows live from Bushwick, Brooklyn. Join our hosts as they lead you through the world of craft brewing, behind the scenes of the restaurant industry, inside the battle over school food, and beyond. Find us at heritageradionetwork.org. So you don't shun the devil with your rock and roll load. Knows that country music's gonna save your soul. The devil runs his groove in them rhythm and blues that sound. It's gonna get you sound in the end. Welcome back to the Speakeasy. I'm Damon Bolte. My name is Souther Teague. Hey, buddy. How you doing? I'm well. <clears throat> yeah? Getting well. I'm getting better. When did, you, did you have a cold? This nasty cold that's going around. Yeah, it got me. You're just not drinking enough whiskey. That's untrue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always drinking enough whiskey. Um, yeah, but it just uh, thanks, Dave. Caught me, uh, caught me off guard. Uh, you know, worked uh, worked an unusual Sunday night shift for the Superb Owl. Oh, you did? Yeah. Why? Because everybody knows I don't care about sports, so they made me work. No, I thought you meant like someone hired you to work a Super Bowl party. Oh no, or no, no, no. I just I had like, to work. that sounds like my own personal hell. No, in the building, um, we had a little bit of a management change, and the two dudes who care most about the Super Bowl were going to go see the, the thing together, and, and suddenly then one of them was going to have to work if I didn't do it. So I, I said I'll do it. Yeah. Because I don't care. Yeah. We had our our uh, company-wide... Can, can oh, that's right. You were plus. close. Yeah, we, we closed a bunch of places. It was really cool. We had uh, our holiday party at the Gutter. The Gutter, yeah. Williamsburg, which is a big punk rock, like, divey Love that spot. Uh, bowling alley. Been a long time. Yeah, man. It was cool. It was uh, Grand Army, um, Rucola, Celestine, Black Seed Bagel, uh, La Turtle, and um, the, the Smile. Rolling with a posse. That's yeah, great. It was great. It was like over 300 people. It was cool. Holy shit. I know. So you took over the, whole, full, the entire it was place. A full buyout, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Amazing. It was, it was awesome. That is awesome. Do people show up for that stuff? I mean, 300 people, like, nobody wanted to see the Super Bowl. They have it playing there, though. Right? There was, like, I, I didn't even know this, but in the gutter, they have like a live music room in the back. I, I didn't know that either. I've never seen shows there, but they uh, they had the big screen up and playing. They had the, the game on, but like there were only like five people out of like over 300 watching it, so it was kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. A bunch of bars and restaurants that don't have TVs in them, you know. <laughs> yeah. I guess after a while, you just kind of like don't really care about watching sports anymore. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was cool. Um, that sounds fun. Glad you got to celebrate. Sure did. We're still having our, our 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 holiday thing is usually in March, so we haven't done it yet. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Trying to find the time. Well, if you need any help, man, let me know. <laughs> Maybe we'll do it at Grand Army. You could. I mean, I mean there's only about seventy of us. Yeah, that's right at our capacity. Hmm. Something let's, to think let's about. Talk after All the right, show. let's talk after the show. <laughs> Speaking, Speaking of, of the show, <laughs> who's on the show today, Damon? We have our buddy Alfred Cronsero in the studio. Uh, Alfred, hello, guys. Hello. How Welcome are you? to the show. Hey, so um, we have, Thanks. along with you and uh, a bunch of glasses and ice and Cointreau <laughs> and tequila and lime and juice. Orange wine. Yeah, I wonder and where this is going. <laughs> really we have <laughs> Kayla and yes. Emily. Welcome to the show. Kayla, Woo! you've been on the show before. Yes. Yeah, welcome back. Thank you. Emily, it's your One first of our time. best welcome. guests, Kayla Mata. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> the actual worst guest. No. You, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
She uh, did, didn't you like show up late that day? Like, because uh, <laughs> uh, yes, hundred yeah. percent. That's what happened. Yeah, well, uh, it was still a great trip today as well. I'm sure Google frazzled. Analytics would support their claim that <laughs> you are popular. <laughs> well, you're here now, so we're good to go. All right, cool. Let's get into it. Alfred, what yep. are you doing here in the United States? <laughs> I enjoy this beautiful weather. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. The uh, wintry mix today in Brooklyn. Yeah. No. So I've got a book in front of me. You have a book that you just put out called Nighttime Walks. It's a traveling book. It's not like a classic book, you know, it's more a traveling book. And through this book, I wanted to share a part of the beautiful experiences uh, I had uh, all around the world. So, yeah, it's a little bit uh, of myself, a little part of myself. I speak a little bit of my family for the introduction to explain uh, what is uh, this beautiful family around this beautiful, uh, iconic uh, bottle uh, Cointreau. Mm-hmm. And also through uh, this um, this bottle, this brand um, drive me all uh, all around the world to meet uh, bartenders, to discovering beautiful places, and to test uh, awesome cocktails. So I wanted to share this uh, experience with uh, people who can read this book. Very cool. I mean, I know that uh, that we know a little bit about Quancho. We've like, it's been it's, around. Uh, it's been around. I mean, I think yeah. I think it's gonna. I think it has legs. It'll stay around for a while. <laughs> yeah. um, it's in you know some of the most iconic cocktails in history. You know, like for one being the margarita, which is actually celebrating its seventieth anniversary. Exactly. This year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This month, right? Yeah, like right now. This year. Yeah. Oh, this cool. year. Well, Wait, we're doing this for one a year, full guys. Year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, full year anniversary. Yeah. Isn't yeah. National Margarita Day like the twenty fourth of twenty second? Twenty second. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Of what? Uh, of February? Month? Yeah. yeah. That's a random month to pick for Margaret. I know. Day. The you know, perfect month. What are you talking about? I guess so. <laughs> Escapism. Escapism. Yeah. <gasps> Jinx. Yes. Yeah. Jinx. Jinx. I mean, I can't Jinx, talk for the rest. Wait, no, you can't yeah. talk for the rest of the <laughs> show now. No. Jinx. Souther, Souther, Souther. Perfect. <laughs> okay, you're back. <laughs> so, okay, so then why don't we start at the beginning? Tell us about Cointreau and your family and this product. But it was born in uh, 1849. That. Uh, so 169 years ago, beautiful number. Um, <laughs> oh boy. With, uh, we got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> with the dream of, uh, of two brothers, uh, Edouard Jean and Adolphe. And uh, Edouard Jean was my great, great, great grandfather. So at the beginning in the family, we were baker. We created another specialty of France. We created uh, La Baguette. No, I'm kidding. We didn't create it. <laughs> <laughs> After we became confectioner, and in 1849, with the dream of those two guys, uh, we became a distillator licorist. Uh, and after, the very quick, they involved the second generation in the business, Edouard, and Edouard had the brilliant idea to work with an exotic and rare fruit, the orange. So he traveled all around the world to find oranges, sweet and bitter oranges, he was interested by the peel, not by the fruit, but more by the peel. And after 10 years of research, he perfected the recipe of Cointreau, this uh, orange liqueur. And in the same time, he designed this iconic bottle. Oh, yeah. So Very cool. Yeah, and the bottle hasn't changed since the beginning, correct? Exactly. As the recipe, it didn't change. So, the, yeah. There's a really cool photo the, of this book at the very beginning. That is the only There's picture you, you can see in, the, in this book. Uh, all the other things are draw. So oh yeah, all the re- all the other the drawings, yeah. 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 So Edouard was really good to create uh, new recipes, um, new bottles, but also to promote them. You so guys know the Red Bull car, like the like the girls that drive yeah. around in the little cars and they've got the Red Bull. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So your great 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 exactly. great grandfather uh, pretty much invented that and had yeah. built a giant Cointreau bottle that he put on the back of a truck and like drove around the countryside in France and was like, you guys want to try some uh, orange liqueur? (laughs) Uh, It's amazing. (laughs) But you can, that's the picture that you're looking at. That's the bottle. He used to have that on the back of an automobile. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like this cool like kiosk shape like the bottle. It's like the Bluth banana stand. I was thinking the same thing. There's always money in the banana stand. (laughs) (laughs) So does that make uh, Edouard the original promo girl? Maybe. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, he was a big fan of new technologies, as you say, cars, uh, phone, and stuff like that. And at the beginning of cinema, created by two uh, French guys, les frères Lumière, the brothers Lumière, um, he created the first uh, commercial movie, the first advertising movie. And on this movie, you can f- you can see um, a beautiful lady who's undressed. 
You guys uh, should see it. It's it's yeah. super creepy to be it's fair, but creepy. it's <laughs> it's great. But it's yeah. It's like so. It's the first advert. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Exactly. Quantro is the has the first video advert. Well, l- wow. I feel like Alfred's being very elegant about it, but let me let me give you some context. It's literally a lady in the background, kind of like sexy dancing, and the main Shimmy, character shimmying. That's what shimmying. you were just doing. She's kind of shimmying, shimmying. <laughs> okay. and then the main character is a clown, a sad clown that has a belly full of some delicious yeah. French food and can't digest his food properly. So the um, the waiter oh. gave to him a bottle of champagne, not appropriate for the digestion, a bottle of red wine, not good for after a good meal. So at the end, the waiter gave to this clown, the Pierrot, it's his name, a bottle of Cointreau, a huge bottle yeah. of Cointreau. So he's so happy because he had a good digestion. And uh, so he, <laughs> he hugs the bottle, he licks he, the bottle. He licks the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Wow. And behind him, yeah. behind him, you can find this video. Is that it right there? Are we getting escorted out? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what, what was that, Dave? <laughs> no, you, you do not have the sounds in this. Uh, yeah. It's really the beginning of cinema, so you just have images. Oh, That's it. Yeah. What yeah, the hell was that, sound. Dave? That was just my own sound, some cartoon. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody relax. It's okay. Damn it, Dave. Damn it, Dave. Damn. I thought I, was still <laughs> having, <laughs> thought I was still having fevered dreams out here. <laughs> <laughs> that may be true. <laughs> so uh, that, that's a, I mean that's really cool that uh, that that he was so interested in in, in like new technologies yeah. and forward thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so the brand gets born and it travels the world, and then so do you. Exactly. So around the neck, you can uh, you can read Cointreau aux quatre coins du monde. That means uh, Cointreau on the four corners of the world. Of course, the world doesn't have corners because it's a, it's a sphere. It's a planet, but... It could be flat. There are some people in America, flat, Alfred, yeah. sadly, that do but, not uh, agree with you, which is yeah. bumming okay. me out, but <laughs> yes, it is round. <laughs> well, but the, the bottle is a square bottle, so you have four corners, so it was a play of words. And uh, Edouard mm-hmm. was really one of the first to give an international vision to his brand. So, awesome. Hmm. Yeah. That's very cool. So I, didn't know in, I didn't know those things. Yeah, right. I always wonder why it was a square bottle. I, well... I never really thought about it. I mean, right. you know, I whenever mean, I see a square bottle, I always think about shipping. That's that's where square bottles kind of came <laughs> yeah. from, right? Because they didn't roll around. Oh. Yeah. And also, oh, you, you can and pack. And you optimize the space yeah. in the boxes. Yeah, and they don't but roll also, around. But also, do you know why it's square? It's not only for a, a shipping reason. It's also because through the design of this bottle, Edouard Cointreau wanted to explain us what was his philosophy when he created the recipe and what is the recipe itself. So... How many uh, corners do you have on a square? Four. How many corners? Four. Four. Yeah. Oh, you're impressive. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you are, <laughs> wake up, guys. <laughs> Is it the digestion? You need a shot of Cointreau. Yeah, maybe. Uh, oh, so, yeah, we did have all that pizza and we didn't have any Cointreau. We're about to. He's Let's have fin- some. Okay. It's well, not wait. finished. It's just the beginning of the afternoon. So. Why did you yeah. make me answer the four, four question, though? What's so, yeah, uh, the four corners, <laughs> like uh, the four ingredients of Cointreau, uh, the water, the pure water, H2O, the alcohol, natural alcohol, 96%, uh, the sugar, just a touch of sugar to give a smoothness, and last but not least, the, the oranges. So yeah, four, four corners to translate the four, uh, the four ingredients of the, of the recipe. Cool. Uh, see, I like watching Emily do the math. Well, <laughs> it, it's like ice math. I was like, I was gonna do two, but I don't know if there's enough ice for two and to yeah. shake it. Uh, so well, we're drinking, we're drinking these up. Oh, yeah, there you go. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> that solves your ice problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're working on building the bar out in here. Yes, we we've, we've uh, brainstormed today just before the show that uh, Damon and I are gonna finally. Get off our asses and build a bar here in the studio so that there's... Ah, uh, what? A so speakeasy that, and the speakeasy. So that we have equipment and Such stuff great. on hand. Because we're always drinking yeah. in here. We may as well... We need a little freezer for ice. That's like always been a thing. It's the ice. <laughs> yeah, they make one that's that size. Uh, yeah, I know. With this weather, you don't need a freezer. Huh? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. You're right, Alfred. Go out and get <laughs> snowballs. Cool. This so This is the worst picture ever. That's <laughs> 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 really bad. It's like... <laughs> Wire in your face. I'm having a blast, guys. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I hope you're having a good time. Listen, I'm still coming down off the night wheel. <laughs> I feel great. So, um, okay, so the product's been developed, uh, the packaging has been designed, and then we start moving into the the world of cocktails. Yeah. Right. So, Alors, yeah. At the beginning, Cointreau in France was appreciated 
on a traditional way, if mm -hmm. I can say that, more uh, as a digestive, neat or nice. And when Edouard Cointreau started to give an international vision, he started by the north of Europe. And uh, German people were the first to use Cointreau in the cocktail. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Cocktail, you say? Cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> nice. What do we have in there? Emily, are you going to shake that cocktail or are you going to rock it to sleep? Mm. Oh, God, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, oh. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> what do we have in there? Margaritas. Where is the sub train? I never saw you put anything in there. Did I not? How about that? How about that? Okay. How about that? You're speedy. I didn't see any of it. <laughs> Looks yeah. awesome. Um, Taste test. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Well, some vitamin C for me. You just made two just for us? What, what's the matter with you yeah. guys? We don't have any more ice. We'll just watch you. We're good. Is it good? Do you like it? That seems weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Here, let's here. split these. It's these packed, are huge. Let's it's, split them. It's packed full of vitamin C. I'll give you that. Oh, um, which I need. Rock to so sleep. So actually, yeah. this is, yeah, you rocked that sucker to sleep. Right, no, it's well emulsified. It looks nice. Thank you. Um, so we're going we're gonna to sip on this margarita, but we should probably take a quick break to hear from our sponsors, and we'll come back and talk, to, talk more to the team from Quattro about this delicious product. Mm. And iconic. Whee! <laughs> sponsor of the Heritage Radio Network. We're also super awesome. Thank you, Heritage. And we are back. You're listening. <laughs> that? That's Brendan from Roberta's, man. He's awesome. He does the best commercials. He's that super awesome, awesome, apparently. He's super duper awesome. <laughs> so just before to break, you say Cointreau, it's iconic. It's iconic. And do you know what is the anagram of Cointreau? But do you know what is an anagram? An, an uh, uh, anagram. anagram is when you take Mofo the letters yeah, of radar. One well, what? Radar. Radar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's when a palindrome. Okay. Ooh, oh. it is. It's so both. A, so an anagram is when you <laughs> take the letters of one word, and uh, you change the letters, and you find another word. Oh, So yeah. what is the anagram of control? Mm. Iconic. And uh, you have a... <laughs> it's a tip. Iconic, it uh, can help you. Yeah, what's that? It's a true icon. Ah, true icon. Is that the tattoo that... Uh, you're getting in this photo? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no, no, I do so not have the true, uh, true icon uh, tattoo. Not yet. But, uh, <laughs> That's a duck. It's just a no, duck. No, no, no. A few, uh, yeah. Oh, that tattoo? <laughs> a yeah. duck. That's a duck. What are you talking about? Uh, the 1806 made, uh, on his arm on the back cover? Yeah. 18, huh? uh, 1806. There you go. That is a Hell yeah. beautiful <laughs> tattoo. On the front, I have the Piero. Yeah. And the other way, I, I have uh, the duck. Because the noise of the duck is a coin coin in France. Uh -huh. So the first letters of Cointreau. So my nickname is friends in French is a coin coin. So voilà. Ah, <laughs> that's <laughs> so cute. Quack quack. Quack quack. I did so, yeah. not know that. That's as long as we're uh, seamlessly getting in key messaging, <laughs> I would like to point out that, <laughs> um, speaking of labels, that Cointreau is actually 80 proof. And that's like the number one thing I love to tell bartenders, love to tell everybody. They don't realize that it's unusual for a liqueur that has the sugar content that we do um, to have that high of proof. So I do think that's why it is delicious in a margarita um, because you're not sacrificing proof. You're you know retaining the balance, but um, and the citrus flavor. But you're still uh, you know that's the sugar content of the drink. So cool. Worth pointing out. So you can use it as a base spirit. 
You could if you want to <laughs> have a hangover, but yes, like, it's delightful. But it is still a cure. There is. Hey, a it's going to happen yeah. either way. Yeah, fair right? enough. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's eighty proof. I think a lot of people don't know that. So. Very cool. Yeah, I don't think I knew that. Yeah. So we are having margaritas. Yeah. A Norwegian on margarita, created in 1948. Look at that. There you by, go. Um, Check. What? <laughs> Margarita Sames, okay. Dallas Social yeah, no, oh. Treated by Margaret Sames. Uh, for, um, she organized a beautiful party in her villa in Acapulco. And to welcome her guests, her friends, she wanted to create uh, a cocktail with her two favorite uh, alcoholic beverage, Crunchyroll and Tequila. And uh, the guest gave the Spanish name, uh, the Spanish version of Margaret, uh, Margarita. So... Cool. Yeah. In Acapulco? In Acapulco. <laughs> yeah. That's the story. Some it's a, Richie Rich in her villa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some Richie Rich in her <laughs> villa. <laughs> Cole kicking it in Acapulco. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it's delicious. from there, so that's 1948. So, where does the margarita move from there? Literally everywhere, right? Yeah. How did it. Was there. Was it a. Uh, marketing still campaign? maintains its mantle as number one ordered cocktail in America. Yeah. In the world. Is the it world. the world? Yes. Yeah. It is yeah. the most popular cocktail in the world. But like like the say like the the Moscow Mule, which was popularized by the like advertisement of the, the recipe from both the ginger beer company and from Smirnoff. Was this something mm-hmm. that came about as did it spread because of an advertisement campaign from like Quantro? No. We never push uh, we never did a global advertising campaign about uh, the margarita. It's uh, when it's good and it's... No, no uh, reprisal of the sad clown? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no it, uh, really, it's a beautiful and delightful cocktail. So naturally, it uh, exports itself uh, everywhere around the world. So we never pushed a lot. Just the margarita, it was... Uh, I'm not trying to sound like a corporate hack, but like it is an exercise in balance, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's such a simple cocktail, but it's so easy to mess up. And... You know, if you hit the note of like the strong base spirit, the citrus, the sweet, like, and you do it right, like, it's easy. It's easy to replicate. You can do it at home, whatever. Yeah. Like, I feel I like. Mean, I mean, I think I would actually kind of go against you on that. I don't think that it is that easy to fuck up. I think it's hard to fuck up. This is one of those drinks that's made out of metal. If you've got the ingredients, it's going to be good. Uh, no, I think you it's disagree? a proportions thing. Like, yes, no. I agree with you that the raw materials need to be, like, delightful. Um, hence why you need to be using Quantro and not some bullshit, but, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, bullshit. Yeah. but like I think if it was so easy or if it wasn't easy to mess up then why if we could walk into so many bars and get a bad one all the time all the it, time all the time like you I mean know, you lived in Dallas yes I know all about bad yeah. margaritas <laughs> like, yeah man. same I mean, Oklahoma. they pull out they pull out that sour mix. It's like neon green, right. and you're Again, like wrong ingredients. Right, right. I get, no, I get for it. sure, for sure. But like, but if there's lime juice, Quattro, and tequila involved, I think it's a pretty metal no, cocktail. It's Quattro tequila and lime juice. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. 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 I agree with you that it's hard to mess up if you're willing to, if you're willing to have good ingredients that you're starting with. Yeah, bad yeah. in, bad out. Yeah. I'm just saying that like there's a few cocktails that come to mind for me that are like I call them they're metal. They're made of metal. Like but I've you, had can, so many you can you can you can you can put the balance totally wrong on a Manhattan and it'll still be a good Manhattan. Like that's a, it's made of metal. Should I make you, you can, a bad margarita to like figure this out? <laughs> <laughs> with the same margarita like the same Ooh, challenge. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't da- want to drink da- a bad margarita. Dave, I've had too Dave many in my life. Yeah. Dave, Dave will drink it. Oh, thanks for volunteering me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're like, Sorry, our, you're like our garbage disposal. So how do you feel about, like, just in, in the world of, like, say, gin martinis, how do you feel about uh, variations on the margarita? Like, different flavored margaritas. Yeah, after it's a um, classic cocktail, it's a base of cocktail and should be an uh, inspiration for, uh, f- to creating new things. But if you want to give the name of margarita, you need to have the three initial ingredients. And after, you can uh, add uh, whatever you want, uh, ginger, honey, or whatever. But if you put, for example, just uh, tequila, uh, agave syrup, and lime, it's not a margarita. Oh, Tommy's margarita? It's just yeah. a Tommy's. That's it. Yeah. Um, um, Tommy burn. burn. Do we have a sound for that, Dave? Whoosh! <laughs> <laughs> Dave's got it all, man. Dang, Dave. Oh, that's nice. No, but after, oh, don't test me. After he's... <laughs> 
it's great if the margarita can be an inspiration for bartenders today and to create a new things. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I think it's a there are certain cocktails that are just they are a platform to build upon. They have a foundation. Things like obviously like I said for the like the martini, I think the Negroni's one of them. Obviously the Manhattan is. But one thing I don't like about the margarita, I don't like salt on the rim, man. That's fine. You do or you no, don't? I don't. Do I don't. And, a, I, and I understand why the salt makes sense for the drink because, it, yeah. like you were saying before the show, anytime you have, add sugar or salt to a dish or to a drink, it's a palate stimulator mm-hmm. and you taste more of the other flavors in the cocktail. But I don't know. I've just never been. How I've are never you? Been a, well, also, growing up in Oklahoma, they they have that thing with the sponge and it's got lime juice in it. <laughs> oh, and yeah. then they dunk it. the whole glass and it's like an inch thick. like On the inside and the outside. Yeah. Inside and the outside. Yeah, that's kind of. I mean, it should be a half rim, right? No, always, always yeah, half. That's why you when I'm going to do it, it's always half. So always half rim. That way, there's a choice for the yeah, drinker. Exactly. But also, um, um, what do you feel about saline solution in the drink? That's more modern. I'd like that. Saline. Yeah, that's what we I do. Like it. That. Chad that's Solomon is listening somewhere and going. Oh. So, you, so you put the salt <laughs> directly in the liquid? Yeah, we we okay. would have like a, a 80, 20, 80 percent uh, water, twenty percent salt solution. Like, okay. A couple drops. Good. You know, we do that to a lot of drinks, not yeah, just yeah. margarita, but. Not just not just citrus drinks. Yeah, exactly. Stirred drinks. Yeah, sure. sure. A couple drops of salt and Negroni. Kill it. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, kill it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Salt yeah, and you're Negroni. Right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, this is no, well, okay, we can agree to disagree. I think that's <laughs> it's if, if all the right pieces are there, I think it's kinda hard to get it too far out of whack. But I think that most people don't have the right pieces to begin with, is I guess my point. Right. Well, so. okay. What would you What would you say that the main one that's missing? It would be fresh lime juice, right? Uh, it would be... Because I feel like Co- Cointreau is everywhere. Well, no, I, uh, you'd be, you'd be shocked. Like, it, sh- it should be. Um, I think, yes, obviously fresh ingredients is key, but um, since it's a modifier, I think a lot of people think from a cost perspective or whatever, like, oh, I can swap it out and it won't be a big deal. Nobody will miss it. And it, it's a huge deal, you know? So... Uh, we were talking about earlier at Food & Wine, like, I just think it's crazy you go to these nice restaurants that don't cut corners, that have, like, heritage kale and all this bullshit, and, like, but then they, <laughs> they, they use, like, some nasty modifier, you know, and with, yeah. like, artificial ingredients in their cocktails, and you're like, I don't understand. I don't know. I feel like this is, like, a, a stale idea that, obviously, you should have a culinary perspective on your beverages that you do on yeah. your... Um, it doesn't even have to be culinary. It just has to be same. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to serve anything, make it great. Yeah. yeah. I agree. If you're going to serve coffee, make it great. But yeah. I've eaten at lots of or really nice restaurants it. that like use gross modifiers, and it's it's a bummer. There's, you know? Yeah. There's like there's only one liqueur that I use behind the bar that is the cheap version because I think it's better. And that's blue curacao. I get like <laughs> to or something like that. But it, are you gonna make? A, are you gonna? Have, you made Cointreau Noir, right? Yeah. That was based with cognac. Yeah. No, it's based of Cointreau. is seventy percent of Cointreau with thirty percent of cognac. Right. And maceration okay, of so one yeah. nuts and almonds. So that was the difference, and it came so, in a yeah. gold bottle. You still make it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Course. Cool. There's some not, blue dye in there. There you go. Not in <laughs> the in the gold bottle was the first version, and you have one. Keep it because it's I'm collector saying, now. I'm just but, saying. Uh, it's you a, know, if you guys really want to become a successful company, uh, <laughs> yeah. maybe you make Quattro Blue. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. No, no. But uh, at the at the beginning, the the Curacao, the blue Curacao, uh, people used the bartender used uh, Quattro, and they add artificial uh, blue uh, color inside. Yeah. Cool. So that after it's a famous um, brand from New Zealand. Uh, Netherlands who created the blue Curacao in a bottle, but at the beginning, bartender used Cointreau with the color. So I think it's mixology. worth noting that like, <laughs> yeah. a lot of people actually don't realize that... So Cointreau is a triple sec. It invented the category, um, blah, blah, blah. That's a different story. But like triple sec and Curacao are two totally different categories, sure. which most people don't realize. So I don't know if you want to talk about the differences, mm-hmm. but... Explain yeah. the uh, difference. Yeah. I would love for... But at the beginning, when uh, the orange liqueur were created, it was called a Curacao. Because the oranges came from, from Curacao. Curacao Island. If someone looking for a job in Curacao, so yeah. So and after, so the Curacao was great, but it didn't taste orange. It was in a brandy base with a low, uh, low, uh, low proof, and with a high rate of sugar. So the brandy and the sugar mask the, um, the orange flavors. So Edouard Cointreau had the idea to create a better orange liqueur than the Curacao. 
So when he perfected his, uh, his recipe after 10 years of research, he gave the name of triple sec, uh, and through the two words, he wanted to explain us what was inside, triple three times more concentrated, with a selection of the best orange peels and with a specific distillation process, at the end he extracted, he, he had an alcoholate three times more concentrated in orange flavors. And sec means dry with less sugar. So uh, because the more you the more you add sugar in your liquor, the more you want to uh, mask the poor quality of the ingredients. So Edouard Cointreau wanted to highlight the orange um, the orange flavors of his uh, of his recipe. So, so basically, three times the orange and drier than, than curacao. Three yeah. times, and a neutral uh, spirit base. Yeah. And way higher content Instead of, of essential oils. Or three times brew, three times the, uh, the orange influence, and then drier. Yes. Yeah. Just dry. I, think, yeah. I think the point is like that Edouard, you know, when he... So Alfred's official title is our global heritage man- manager. So he, you know, spends a lot of time in the archives, uh, doing a lot of research, and just like obviously embodying the brand, but also preserving, you know, the heritage of the brand. And one of the things that he uncovered is that, you know, when 1849, when the distillery opened, like, oranges were the most exotic flavor anyone can think of. So everyone was making an orange curacao. Cointreau, to be on trend, was like, we should do that too. But I think the thinking with someone like Edouard was that it wasn't about making something commercially that would be successful. It was like, w- the question of like, what is the apex of what an orange liqueur can be? So they kept exactly. changing it, changing it, changing it, changing it mm-hmm. until they were like, shit, I think I have something totally new, which I think is interesting. Isn't it crazy to think that, you know, 170 years ago that oranges were like that exotic? It was like the matcha it was, it was, of its it was, time. It was a gift for <laughs> Christmas, huh? a beautiful gift yeah. for Christmas was an orange. And we take and it for granted these days. Yeah, know? of course. Yeah. I mean, and when you look in the history of France, uh, when you had a king, the king had uh, they had a castle, and close of the castle there was an orangerie. It was a house where they put the orange trees. And the more you had orange trees, the more you were powerful. You know, today when you have a nice car, a nice sure, watch, it's a status symbol. Yeah, exactly. So in this time, it was the orange trees, the yeah. golden fruit trees. That was the name of the, yeah. the wow. orange trees. Golden yeah. fruit, yellow browns, they call them. The yellow reds, sorry. Yellow, red. <laughs> yellow reds. Before the word orange existed, they called them yellow reds. Yellow reds. Then they created the word orange for the fruit. Really? Okay. Crazy. Etymology. Yellow red, okay. Look at and, the, and that gives the name to the color. The yeah. fruit gives mm-hmm. the name to the color. So, so. Yeah. So how does yellow it, red, I, I mean, do you, do, you, do you roll around like, I mean, you're like sort of royalty. No. <laughs> so you, you, you brought you up, a lot of oranges, I'm, bro. Just, uh, you, you brought up kings, right? No. Yeah, yeah. You, you got a lot of oranges in your life. So... I mean, we're drinking orange wine. Too. Yeah, right. Was that, was that planned out? P.S. Look at his socks. I know. Um, I, I can't stop looking at his socks. Yeah, they're, they're, right, they're right there in your face. I can't um, stop. <laughs> now he's hiding them. I'm making him nervous. So I mean, but like, you're you're what generation are you at this point? The six. You're the sixth generation of this yeah. iconic brand, exactly. and you you carry its name. Like you're you're sort of royalty in the in the. I'm not a royalty. Huh? I am a cool guy, more or less. <laughs> So he actually, his uh, siblings and cousins are not in the business. So Alfred's actually u- unique in that way that he fought to be part of this I am company. unique. Oh, yeah. thank you. Well, you're very unique, but <laughs> that's another discussion. But what, what do you mean you fought to be in it? The, your, your, your siblings didn't want to be a part of it? No, it's if you want to join the family business, it has to be a personal choice. We do not put pressure on the shoulders. And um, we encourage to go to see other things. And if you want to join, it has to be a personal choice. So today, from the sixth generation, I am the only one who decided to take care of, the, of this uh, beautiful, uh, iconic uh, bottles. Maybe uh, one day, one of my cousins, my brother, my sister will join. And maybe after the seventh generation, we'll do it. So mm. we never it's know. It's kind of so. like being Amish. It's a rum springer. Yeah, yeah that's what I was just about to <laughs> yeah. say. Actually. I was about to say the same yeah. thing. You and I, were together we're, today. Yeah, we're insane. You want NyQuil, too? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I'm always on NyQuil. <laughs> <laughs> Hopped up on NyQuil and Tide Drops Pods. NyQuil yeah. <laughs> so you, you were encouraged to go out and, and, and get schooling and get see yeah. the world and understand other things. I was and, a perfect pupil. Oh, and then my you, God. <laughs> yeah, you look at <laughs> uh, And then you came back to, uh, to yeah. the family and said, no, you know what? I've gone and looked around. I want to yeah. do this. Before I did uh, different stuff, I worked for Copy System, uh, advertising department of a newspaper, a lot of stuff like that. And I wanted to have a passion uh, to kick my ass out of my bed every morning, you know. And uh, every morning I saw my father to go to his garage with a smile 
because when my father was younger, uh, he went to the distillery, but he didn't go in the pot still room. He went in the garage where we had a guy who fixed uh, the trucks and the cars of the sales teams, etc. So he became passionate about, about engine and uh, vintage cars. So from he pay, his passion, he did his job. And uh, also I saw my grandfather until the end of his life. He, he passed away when he had uh, 90 years old. Uh, 69 years in uh, in the in the in the company. Beautiful oh. number. Beautiful <laughs> number. <laughs> no, no, but during, s- during 69 years, he went with uh, with a smile and with, with passion in his office. So I wanted to to do to have the same in my in my job. So um, and when I decided to join the family business, I never had a um, comment. Did regret? Regrets. 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 So yeah. And I really la- like it. And when I started, I spent one year at the distillery to meet uh, everybody, all the employees, to uh, um, start at the selection of the oranges to the pot still, um, to the pot still room uh, until the bottling line. And in one year at the distillery, I learned more, more than five years at school. So yeah, of course. Yeah. So it was like an apprenticeship. Yeah. Yeah, and got, total and you, immersion. You, yeah, and you started from from what you said selection of oranges all the way through bottling. Yeah, exactly. So you saw the because whole thing. when you, when you are in Fred Pointreau, you can say uh, I don't know about a, about a question uh, around this brand. So yeah. yeah, you need to have yeah. the answer, yeah. right? Very cool. So then, all right, now you did all that, and then you traveled around a lot. And exactly. Then you so wrote this book. In this book, I wanted to share Which every uh, single page has a different name of a city. Yeah. So yeah, in uh, I can uh, in each pages each cities, you can see a place. So should be a bar or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can uh, see someone uh, should be uh, a person. I mean, should be uh, a bartender or not. Or you can see a cocktail. So I describe um, everything when I met this person, when I went in this place, or when I uh, tested this cocktail with a nice draw. I hope they are, they are nice. And, this um, is your art. No, no, okay. fortunately, no. <laughs> but um, but yeah, and at the end, you can find the address of those places, so you can have your own experience through uh, the experience I already had. So, what was that? Um, what was that Charles Baker book like Jigger Beaker Flask yep. around the world? Mm-hmm. I feel like this is like that, but f- a little Franglishy and more funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Very well, it looks cool. charming. It's got these really beautiful hand hand drawn uh, uh, illustrations, yeah. and uh, and then yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm just sort of thumbing through it right now. We just got it before the show, so I haven't had a chance to look at it. But each each page is a different city, sometimes yeah. different countries. Exactly. I like it because it looks like a it. journal entries almost, because the drawings yeah. are you know more rustic, and it's like very much. It yeah. sounds like you talking. You know, it sounds yeah. like just oh, like that your was memory. The objective. Yeah. So that is the first book. I would like to write uh, three more because uh, number four is really, really important. Four corners. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. S- square bottle, four square, corners. Exactly. I'm paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Will. <laughs> the anagram of control, what is it? <laughs> uh, true true uh, icon. Icons. A true icon, yeah. Yes, yeah. there you go. See yeah, you Dave! Yeah. <laughs> I'm paying attention the whole time. <laughs> Dave's a real star on this thing. I didn't no, realize yeah. that he was the brains behind this operation, guys. <laughs> He's the hamster on the wheel that keeps the thing running. <clears throat> oh my it's very cool. It's it's kind of anecdotal. It's like you said. It's like journal entries. It's just a fun book. It's like this. This is like you said uh, before the show that like on the front cover. It's you standing at a bar with a full drink, and then on the back cover, the drink is empty. So you should start it with the drink, and yeah. then finish the drink by the time you get. And it is—it's a short, quick read, but it's also—it's kind of a—it's kind of like a travel companion, you know. Like yeah. when you're on the road, you just like blast through this, and yeah, you know, you that was intentional, to, like, right? That was yeah, yeah, yeah that was definitely. intentional. Like he made it that size to like mm-hmm. it's easy in a carry on, like yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, totally cool. So. Alfred, do you want to tell these guys our plan for your U.S. tour? Because we're just kicking it off. Oh, yeah. We're on day two right now. So. What? So yeah, yes. day two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, didn't know I am already tired. Yeah, Rockstar <laughs> tour. Yeah, so when did you get here? Uh, I arrived on Monday. I landed on Monday afternoon. Straight from France? Straight from Paris. Yeah. We had dinner with uh, another icon, um, uh, <laughs> uh, Toby Ciccini, who's amazing, oh, yeah. obviously. And um, lovely dinner with him. Um ended up uh, we were at the nomad that night and then we ended up at long island bar the next day 
which was yesterday. Pff, yesterday. Oh my yeah. god! But it was just like so comfortable, and everyone yeah. was so happy, and like we were having so much bar. fun with him, and like we everyone. It was just, movie, no, it was yeah. difficult to leave. Yeah. Like so, we're all tired today, but lots more to see. Well, I hope you have your energy. What uh, what spots are on the tour? New York City, then what? Uh, Dallas after. Hmm? Yep. Uh, after New Orleans. Yes. We are actually going to Mardi Gras, and we are dressing as Piro, that yeah. creepy clown. <laughs> and we have an Can army of bartenders that are going to You carry on a bottle same. that you lick? Yep. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> going to be great. <laughs> and, uh, and we finish uh, to San Fran, at San Fran. Cool. Yeah. So great. Dallas, New Orleans, San Francisco. Not, not, a, not a crazy schedule, it doesn't sound like. Mardi Gras is going to be insane, though. Have you yeah. ever been? I've never gone. I, I already gone to New Orleans for Tales of Cocktail. So it was crazy. Yeah. It's crazy yeah. during Tales of Cocktail. But every, oh, 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 every, oh, you everybody, ain't seen nothing yeah. yet, pal. Yeah. Everybody told me I lived in New Orleans for three cocktail. years. I'm from oh, like, oh, South Louisiana. That's well, awesome. I will see that. Yeah, man. Well, but immediately after this, we're actually going to go to Grand Army Woo! and have yeah. some Quantro cocktails. Yay. Sounds awesome. Yeah, I so we're going to be <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> Wish I could God go. damn it, Dave. You're so Dave. good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be uh, featuring some, uh, some Qua- uh, Quantro and Quantro, Remy Quantro products um, today from 5 to 7 at Grand Army uh, and hanging out with um, Alfred and Emily and Kayla having some drinks. We'll have the book there to check out and uh, yeah, be a good time. We'll get you back, get you back on the horse, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We need it. After <laughs> after yeah. crushing it with Toby last night at Long Island Bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> easy to do. It, awesome. <clears throat> it is easy to do. <laughs> All right. Cool, man. That's about it for the show today. Uh, what do we got coming up, Southern? Let me take a look. Um, we have uh, upcoming shows include, but aren't limited to, Sam Ross from uh, Attaboy. Maggie. Never heard of him. Yeah, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Sorry. He's a kid from Australia. <laughs> Again, another plucky little bar. I hope they make it. Um <laughs> Uh, Maggie Hoffman's going to be on to talk about her new book called One Bottle Cocktails. Um, we've got Rob Morton's going to be on from uh, Critical Mass to talk about how just how a company uh, makes and produces um, big events. He's a big event drink maker. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we make cocktails by the, I don't know, well, one, by the I one at a time. <laughs> we also yeah. make cocktails maybe on a heavy guns. service night by the batch of a liter bottle, but he makes cocktails on a scale of the, the tens of thousands. That's crazy. I'm just curious to know how the fuck that happens. Yeah. Yeah. When I deal with a room that's 240 square feet and he's dealing with 240,000 people. That's insane. It's just insanity. Uh, so those are upcoming shows and, and many more uh, like them that we're, we're getting lined up. Uh, so please stay tuned and take a listen. I'd like to just throw in one quick plug for my buddies. Um, I forgot to mention at the top of the show, on Super Bowl Sunday, I got to hang out with them. They came into the complex and I took them all around. It was uh, Ed Rudisell and Arthur Black. They have a, a podcast called uh, Shift Drink. They're from Indianapolis. I don't know if you've listened to it, Damon, but yeah. it's, it's a great it's podcast. It's a great name for a podcast. Yeah, it's a great podcast. Um, similar to ours, in, in fact, in how they uh, approach the guest as sort of like uh, after hours, you're getting a chance to listen to them while they have their shift drink. That's the name of their, their yeah. story. Um, uh, but they do a little bit more editing and polishing, so <laughs> a little yeah. cleaner than us. <laughs> um, but a great show, and those dudes were really awesome, and, and I, I'm really glad I got to hang out with them. Uh, anyway, that's all I've got with my drug-addled brain today. <laughs> you're doing great, buddy. You're Thanks, great. man. Um, well, that, yeah, I guess that wraps up today. Um, please uh, support this uh, family. They're trying to make it with this product called Cointreau. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this scrappy little operation. Yeah. yeah. Um, Got some car washes and bake sales coming up, guys. If you could show up, please. <laughs> <laughs> we got a Kickstarter. <laughs> Anyway, Indiegogo. Uh, but thanks again for coming on the show today. Been, thanks for welcoming us. Yeah, it's, really uh, appreciate. There's a lot of stuff that I learned today that I didn't know back one. Me too. So I, that's always the best kind of show. Yep. And I uh, can't wait to go have uh, some happy hour drinks with you guys. Right. Yeah. All right. So that's it for the Speakeasy this week. Check out Heritage Radio Network for many more programs like this one, and click on the beating heart to donate to the station so we can keep on keeping on. Till next week. Cheers, y'all. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Yeah. Something. So you don't shun the devil with your rock and roll load Knows that country music's gonna save your soul The devil runs his groove in that rhythm and blues that sound It's gonna get you some in the end Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network Food radio supported by you For our freshest content and to hear about exclusive events Subscribe to our newsletter 
Enter your email at the bottom of our website, heritageradionetwork.org. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at heritage underscore radio. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization driving conversations to make the world a better, fairer, more delicious place. And we couldn't do it without support from listeners like you. Want to be a part of the food world's most innovative community? Rate the shows you like, tell your friends, and please join our community by becoming a member. Just click on the beating heart at the top right of our homepage. Thanks for listening. Let's